how's it going? So in case you're new here, hi, my name is Atisa and I am currently a third year medical student at the University of Birmingham. Now I'm going to be making a video every day in the month of November and today I wanted to talk to you guys about the clinical skills that we have to learn for this year. So obviously being in third year it means that this is my first year of being on the wards and kind of being exposed to what it's like working in a hospital setting. And on top of all of like the medical theory that we have to learn and also the whole concept of getting used to talking to patients and doing examinations like doing you know blood pressure and taking temperature etc we also have to get signed off a whole number of clinical skills and I have got them on my phone and I want to kind of go through them because if you are applying to medical school or maybe you're just thinking about medicine maybe you might not have an idea of what kind of things these are going to be and also I thought it might just be kind of fun for me to share them with you so before I share with you the actual skills let me just give you a little bit of a background of how it works in my university I'm almost certain that other universities have got a similar system but basically the way it works is that we have to obtain competencies in a number of these clinical skills and get it signed off by a doctor or a nurse or some sort of healthcare professional to ensure that we actually can do them. So to give you an example, let's say one of our clinical skills is learning to take a swab. It can be just that simple. The way it will work is that we may be given a simulation of how these are done. So in certain cases, we may practice taking like mouth swabs, for example, from each other, or in other cases where we have got the simulation dummies available, we can practice, for example, taking blood from a fake arm. And once we've got these simulations signed off, and this is usually signed off by some of our clinical teaching fellows who are doctors that are taking a year out to essentially do some teaching in a hospital. So once we get our simulations done, then we can go onto the ward and start practicing these skills on actual patients. And once we have done them and it has been observed by a member of staff, then we can get them signed off. Now, the reason why I'm swinging my phone around in this video is that all of the signings have now been moved to a digital platform. So previously students would basically walk around with a booklet that has got all of the skills that they need to do in there. And when they have done a skill and, ha and have had it observed, if I can get my words out, um, then they would just pass on that little notebook to let's say a nurse or one of the doctors and they would just put a date and signature to say that, yep, the student has done this and they can do it. All right, so. Let's just get onto this app and I will talk you through some of the skills for third year. Oh, and that's the other thing. So because I'm in third year, there are a set number of skills that I have to learn. But obviously when you go to fourth year and fifth year, you may have to learn certain other skills and those skills will just be a bit more advanced. So let me just open up the app. So the app itself is relatively simple. So I'm not going to go too much into that. But basically the skills that we have to do are divided into two sections. One of them is diagnostic observed procedures and the other one is therapeutic observed procedures. All right, so let's start with the first one and this is the diagnostic observed procedures. And I can just share these with you as I go along and then maybe like insert pictures or anything that might be relevant here. So that's a job for future Atusa in editing. So starting off with the diagnostic observed procedures, three of the most basic skills that we have to learn for this year are what we class as OBS or observations. And these include taking blood pressure and pulse monitor readings, measuring body temperature, and also measuring oxygen saturation. Now, in an actual hospital setting, there is what, I guess I can describe it as like a little unit, and I'll try and put a picture up. But basically, in that little unit, you can do all three of these at once. So you can select the appropriate blood pressure, cuff and measure a patient's blood pressure. You can also place on a little device on their finger to measure oxygen saturation. And also there are disposable thermometers. Well, okay, the thermometer itself isn't disposable, but there is a thermometer that has disposable caps that you can place under the patient's tongue to measure their body temperature. So all of these things we have to learn and sign off. And I think the art of getting these signed off is not just the actual skill of doing it but also interacting with the patients and using your bedside manner to be like okay can, i'm just going to place this under your tongue now please can you close your mouth for me and hold it there for a few seconds etc all right so those are the three observations so 
Next on my list, we have got performing a 12 lead ECG. And I will put a little uh, picture here of what that looks like. And I'm going to try and avoid uh, talking through like why we do each one of these skills because like we will literally be here forever because I have so much to say on each of them. But yeah, you can do a 12 lead ECG just to check the condition of a patient's heart. I will say just that. <laughs> Then the other skills we have got is managing an ECG monitor. So while a 12 lead ECG is placing the leads on a patient's chest and taking a reading, a monitor is when patients are continuously kept on some of these leads just to con continuously measure the state of their heart. Then the next two skills we have got is, are, I should say, ophthalmoscopy, which is essentially using a device to have a look at the back of a patient's eye, and otoscopy, which is having a look inside a patient's ear. Next, we have got something called a peak flow, and if any of you guys are asthmatic, you may already know what that is, but basically it is a way to measure respiratory function. Then, as I mentioned in the example at the start of this video, we have got taking nose, throat, and mouth swabs, which is literally cotton wool, take a swab from the appropriate place and we do those to send them off to see if there are any cultures or infections. Next we have got blood glucose monitoring and again any of you diabetics out there will know that what we do for this one is essentially get a little pinprick needle, get a tiny bit of blood from a patient's fingertip and then place that on a device that will give us a reading of their blood glucose. And finally, the very last skill that we have to do in year three as part of the diagnostic observed procedures is a urine dipstick, also known as a urine analysis. Now, again, the way that this works is that you will have to ask the patient to uh, give you some urine in a pot and you will place in, in fact, I'll put a picture here because I think the picture will to explain it well. Um, but you will put in a piece of card or the dipstick and that will be able to show you if there are abnormalities in the urine. So if you have got blood in the urine, if you've got protein, if you've got white blood cells, this test will be able to tell you very quickly. And there you go. So those are all of the skills from the observed. Now moving on to the second section, this is the therapeutic observed procedures section. And here are some of the items on this list. So the first thing is blood transfusion, and no, we don't actually have to do the transfusions ourselves for third year. I think when you get into fourth and fifth year, then you may be asked to set up the transfusions yourself. But in third year, all we have to do is observe the transfusion. And on all of the three occasions that I have gone to get this signed off, the nurses have very kindly spoken to me through exactly what they have to do. So for example, they have to ensure that the patient's blood is matched. You have to have two nurses signing off to make sure all of the checks are done. And then you would just attach the bag of blood essentially to the patient and monitor them over the specific time needed in order for the transfusion to be complete. And then on a similar line to that, this next thing we do actually have to do ourselves, and that is setting up fluid infusions. Now, if you guys have ever seen either on TV or you may have seen it in a hospital yourselves, when patients have a cannula put in, and that's essentially where you get a needle placed into one of your veins, which stays there, it's secured on by tape. We'll get to that in a moment because it's one of the skills. Um, but basically, one of the skills that we have to do is to give the patients an IV infusion. Now that can be as simple as just giving the patient simple fluids, so you may be giving them simple saline, or it could be a number of other things, such as medications or iron, perhaps? Can you give iron infusions? I believe you can, but don't quote me. You can use it to give patients IV fluids. So that's one of the lists. Then the next thing we have got is an injection and it is an IV bolus. Then we have got um, subcutaneous injections and intramuscular injections. And that's essentially the difference between injecting something either deep into the muscle or into the subcutaneous fat. And again, with these injections, there are various different types. So you can give, for example, an intermuscular injection in your arm. So that can be like a flu jab. Or with various other injections you may have to give, especially if the medication that you're giving is quite lipidy, then you can give them as a gluteal injection. So yeah, those are two, two of the other skills. The next one that we Okay, so my camera cut out for a second, so I hope you got the end of that clip. But in case you didn't, the next things that we have on our list are a nebulizer, and here is an image for that. 
um, then it is parenteral administration and that is essentially making up certain drugs and finally we have got venous cannulation and that's what I was mentioning earlier so this is what a cannula would look like on a patient and it is essentially a needle that is secured in place and that just gives us easy access to give the patient either fluids or to give them blood if they're having a transfusion, an IV bolus or any medications. So I haven't done that one yet. Some of these actually are to do in our first semester and some are to do in our second semester. And I think cannula is a second semester skill. And then last but not least, the two most important, I guess, skills that we have to get signed off. And I say that only because with all of the skills that I've mentioned, you only need to do three you only need to get three signed off for the year but for the two that I'm about to mention you have to get six of each signed off and we have the entire year to do it so it's not like we're short of time but the final two are vena puncture so that's essentially learning to take blood and also giving oxygen and I know that the oxygen one might sound kind of simple because you may think okay you're literally just placing on an oxygen mask but the reason why this is important and that we need six of it is because there are different types of oxygen masks and different patients will have different oxygen requirements so the reason why it's important for us to kind of get our head around it is to know that if a patient comes in with one thing versus the other which type of oxygen mask do you give them and how much and there you have it so those are a bunch of the skills that we have to get signed off for third year and I'll be honest with you when I first started this year it was all a bit bizarre because it genuinely felt like playing a game of Pokemon Go where you're walking around on the wards trying to see if any skills are available so that you can catch it and you know be able to perform it and be able to get it signed off because obviously you are practicing these skills on actual patients so it's not the case of well I want to get this signed off let me just go and do it some of it is a case of just finding the right patients that need to have that specific procedure done and it's a little bit of a game of just being at the right place at the right time sometimes and being able to just speak to the nurses and say well you know I kind of need to get like a blood signed off do you know if any patients need any bloods done or do you know any patients that might need their blood glucose measured and yeah so there's a lot of I guess lurking around the wards trying to catch these skills but it has been one of my favorite part of medicine so far because I am quite a hands-on person and although a lot of these skills are skills that are typically done by the nurses on a day-to-day -day basis Basis. So for example the OBS that I mentioned, so the temperature, the blood pressure and the oxygen saturations, I think that is done every morning and I want to say every evening on all of the patients on the ward and this is done by the nurses. But a lot of these skills you do also have to do them as a doctor, especially if you're working in general practice. There you go! So. I hope you have uh, learned something and gained a bit of insight into some of the clinical skills that we have to do for the year. I will wrap it up there and as I said I'm doing a video every day in the month of November so if you would like to see anything specific, if you have any suggestions, let me know down below. Alright my lovelies, I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you tomorrow!